Beloved of God, welcome. 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 No matter where you are on life's journey, welcome. Welcome everything that comes to you today and know it's for your healing. Welcome all thoughts, feelings, emotions, persons, situations, and conditions. Let go of your desire for power and control. Let go of your desire for affection, esteem, approval, and pleasure. Let go of your desire for survival and security. Let go of your desire to change any situation, condition, person, or yourself. Open to the love and presence of God and God's action within. Beloved of God, welcome. The psalmist proclaims that our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. We gather in the name of our brother, friend, and savior, Jesus Christ, for we are the body of Christ and individually members of it. If one member suffers, all suffer its pain. If one member is honored, all share its joy. We come together as a community of love to bring ourselves and others to the God who offers us wholeness where we find fragmentation, hope where we find fear, forgiveness where we find judgment, community where we find loneliness, healing where we find hurt. And this year, we bring before God a novel coronavirus that has kept us apart and continues to keep us physically apart. On this first Sunday of September, the last Sunday we would normally worship here in our chapel, we normally would hold our annual hope and healing service. Instead, I stand here alone in an empty church building, only able to conjure up your faces in my mind's eye. This year, in the throes of COVID-19, we will name our sorrow. We will lament. We will express our grief and feel our anger, even cursing this virus. Maker of the universe, you want us to respect and care for all creatures, not curse and destroy them. But couldn't we make an exception for this virus? It's terrible and doing so much harm. You yourself were not above cursing things. Remember how unhappy you once were with us? You, you sent a flood. And Jesus didn't go easy on the fig tree. He cursed it, and it withered just like that. I don't understand why, but I do know this. Cursing shouldn't be done lightly or often, but now seems like the perfect time. People have suffered so much, so forgive me if I'm crossing any lines here, but here goes. You malevolent, horrible virus. You microscopic, nasty, you pox with spiky crown. I maledict and curse you. I imprecate and revile you. I extricate and scorn you. I summon science to annihilate you, to bleach you and to wipe you, to test you and to trace you, to send you writhing into the void. With righteous strength, I oppose you. In the name of life, I damn you. Be damned and be gone. 
Be damned and be gone. Be damned and be gone. Be gone. We say be gone, coronavirus, because we are not only people living in a time of pestilence and pandemic, we are still who we are with all that burdened us before. Our illnesses, our aches, our anxieties, our fear, our grief, our questions, our longings, our loneliness our sorrows. I invite you to bring it all to the God who brings us into reconciliation of all things, a God who receives our bodies, our minds, our hearts, our relationships, our lives, and our very souls, a God who gives wisdom to the doctors who care for our bodies, discernment to those providers who care for our minds, and love to our family, friends, and church. While we may come today with hearts that break, by the grace of God, they can also mend just as they continuously beat within us. Let us call out to that gracious God, as the psalmist once did with our call to worship. Will you join me, please? I waited patiently for the Lord. He inclined to me and heard my cry. God drew me up from the desolate pit, out of the miry bog, and set my feet upon a rock, making my steps secure. God put a new song in my mouth, a song of praise to our God. Many will see and fear, and many will put their trust in the Lord. Let us pray. Holy One, you welcome us in. You make room for us. 
you offer us a home. But even more than that, you offer us hope in the midst of sorrow. We bring before you all of the harsh realities of living, especially in this season of COVID-19. We bring before you our lamentations and our grief. We lay at your feet the pain and hurt we have caused, the pain and hurt we have sustained, the anxieties and aches of life, the aches of bodies that feel like they have betrayed us, minds and hearts that some days feel broken. We bring these all to you, God. You are the source of healing. You create possibility and hope. You dry our tears. You open us up to so much more than we see. You are with us, gracious God, as creator, friend, and spirit. Make us whole. In your holy name we pray. Amen. morning. Listen now to Psalm 103. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and do not forget all his benefits. Who forgives all your iniquity, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit, who crowns you with steadfast love and mercy, who sacrifices you with good as long as you live, so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. And now from the Gospel according to Matthew, the fifth chapter. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up to the mountains. And after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak 
and he taught them by saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called the children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven, for in the same way they persecute the prophets who were before you. Here ends the reading from God's word. Thanks be to God who is still speaking. And this is my stone. Though we may try, none of us can make sense of a novel coronavirus that has wreaked havoc on all our lives. Almost every aspect of our daily lived experience has changed. We have adapted and adjusted, twisted and turned, compromised and converted. Uncertainty and confusion have led to anxiety and depression. While some of us are isolated in our homes, all of us are isolated from the life we once knew. Mentions of a so-called new normal seem premature as we can only continue to navigate uncharted and very dangerous waters. We are living at a time the history books will undoubtedly vividly capture, a time none of us were prepared for or could prepare for. We are weary and heavy laden, burdened by sadness and grief, bereft, left cursing the virus. Friends, please honor the range of emotions you are experiencing. Allow yourself to feel what you're feeling. No judgment, no denial, no repression. Just feel what you feel by giving yourself permission to ride this roller coaster range of emotions. Find comfort in knowing that we are all strapped into this roller coaster ride together, even if sitting seats apart. God is present in the space in between. His love, as deep as it is wide, more expansive than the human mind can imagine or even begin to comprehend. But let's be honest, we still want to be together. Even if we do know how expansive God's love is and how present God's spirit is, we want to be together. We miss each other. We miss the routines and rhythms of the days of our lives. We miss human touch and connection. We miss so much. I am constantly asking myself, how might we continue to be physically distant and spiritually close? Marguerite Poret, a French mystic from the 14th century, provides some insight from her intimate encounters with God. She described her experience of the divine in this way. God is like a faraway love, so close within and so far outside. Therefore, Marguerite 
decided to call God far near. One word, far near. Distant and close, all at once. God is far and near, transcendent and imminent. God is far near, and God is the space in between. The desert monks of the fourth century encountered God in a similar way. Evagrius Ponticus wrote this way back when, that the monk is the one who is separate from all and in harmony with all. The monk is separate from all and in harmony with all. The thing that always strikes me about this sentence is the word and, writes Stephanie Paulsell of Harvard Divinity School. Evagrius doesn't say that the monk is the one who is separate from all but in harmony with all. He simply says, and, as if being separate from others and yet in harmony with them is a human capacity well within our reach. Let me say that again. As if being separate from others and yet in harmony with them is a human capacity well within our reach. For God is far near, and we can be too. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on us. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on us. Melt us, mold us, fill us, you. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on us. As the summer comes to an end and the daylight lessens, The heat of the sun softens, and autumn ushers in a fresh new season. Let us enter it also with wonderment. Let us begin this fall with a renewed sense of the spirit of the living God and of all that just may be possible in what feels like an impossible time. As resurrection people who expect life after death, don't we see the light even dimly at the end of this seemingly endless ride? As recipients of that Holy Spirit of the living God, do we not also recall that we are not mandated to live within the confines of modern rationality? as Hebrew Bible scholar Walter Brueggemann put it. For even at such a time as this, we are called to bear witness to what is, but also to what will be. We can plant the seeds of a post-pandemic world today. We live in the now and the not yet, the far and the near, separate and in harmony. This season of the great slowing down 
this moment of great realization, this time of great courage, hope, and possibility is an invitation to encounter God far near, so close within, and so far outside, and in all the spaces in between. The Spirit of the living God is begging to fall afresh on us in both sorrow and hope. I hope you will explore the possibilities within you and within all of humanity for what could be. Let us lay down our burdens and bear witness to the power of God far near to sustain and connect us, separate from all and in harmony with all. We are the monks and mystics of this moment. eternal flame that keeps the spark of hope alive in all of us, we humbly come before you this day, bringing all of our sorrows, all of our lament, and all of our hope to this sacred hour. Thank you for your constant presence with us, for we know that whether we are gathered together or far apart, you are near. Grant us the knowledge that we are never alone. You do not leave us, even during the periods of our lives when we are in deepest mourning, wondering where you are in the midst of the hopelessness. In these times of sorrow, in these times of uncertainty and loss, fear and deep despair, draw ever closer to us O oh, great comforter, help us to feel your proximity to us, engulfing us in the warmth of your love and protection. 
as we grieve the loss of many members of our church family this year, as we lament the canceled events and the way of normal life, as we weep for the deep divisions breaking open in our country, we cry out to you. Meet us in these depths of despair, God, as we await whatever resurrection that is in store, because we are a resurrection people and we know resurrection is in store. Keep fanning the flame of hope that is kindled deep within each of our hearts and renew within us a sense of your never-ending love, care, and healing. This morning especially, wrap your loving and comforting arms around Debbie and Al Barber and their grandson Rudy, Bruce Hansford, Carol Horner, Mary Mask, Tolu Schuyler Quinn, Pastor Amy's friend, and Arthur and Gladys Wells. We offer these prayers in the name of the one in whom we place our greatest hope, Jesus Christ. There are as many ways to give as there are living things on this planet. We thank Jeff and Sally Saltzman today for the gift of our flowers, given in loving memory of Dr. Glenn Saltzman and in honor of Nicholas Saltzman and their birthdays. As Matthew 5 states, if you are about to offer your gift to God at the altar and there remember that your sister or brother has something against you, leave your gift in front of the altar, go at once and make peace with your brother or your sister, and then come back and offer your gift. In response to Christ's invitation, we reach out to each other in forgiveness, mercy, and love. And do God in gratitude for God's grace, comfort, and healing. While we cannot pass the offering plates, think of our new website, kentucc.org, as our offering plate now. Just click on the Give tab in the top right-hand portion of the site. Your tithes, gifts, and offerings will now be gratefully received so that we may continue to minister to all who are weary and heavy laden. join me in our prayer of dedication. Lord Jesus, we dedicate these gifts to those in need of hope and healing. And that includes all of us living in this time of COVID-19. Jesus, thank you for carrying our sorrows and our burdens. Thank you for catching our stones. Thank you for inviting us to lay it all down at the foot of your cross. May our offerings, blessed by you, be a healing force in this congregation, community, and the world. Amen. And now may the hope and healing power of the peace of Christ be with you today and always. Last Sunday, we were reminded of Paul's encouragement in his letter to the early church in Rome 
to weep with those who weep, and to rejoice with those who rejoice. Of course, we prefer to rejoice than weep. But our God meets us right where we are. Whatever we are feeling or experiencing, weeping with grief or rejoicing with hope, we are living through a global pandemic. It has affected us in dramatic ways, changing our lives forever. We are grieving the loss of life and health and human connection lamenting all that cannot be. And we do come weary and heavy laden by the uncertainty of an unknown future. We are burdened. Some of us carry small individual burdens that cause us to walk through life with some hindrance. There are some of us who carry many small burdens the collective weight of these burdens becomes too much for us to carry at times. And some of us carry much larger burdens that are simply too much to bear. You may carry a burden that has come to you completely outside of your control. You may not have even known how much this burden was weighing you down until you suddenly realized that its weight had actually become unbearable. But here's the thing. God doesn't want us to carry our burdens alone. God invites us to lay them down at the foot of the cross. The cross of great sorrow and profound hope so that we surrender our heavy loads and heavy hearts to him. Psalm 68 verses 19 and 20 say this, Praise be to the Lord, to God our Savior, who daily bears our burdens. Our God is a God who saves. From the sovereign Lord comes escape even from death in Isaiah 61, verses 1 to 3, the Spirit of the Lord is on me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives and release from darkness for the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn and provide for those who grieve, to bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, and a garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair. It takes an act of our own will to give up our burdens. We can sit in the presence of God and hear God still speaking to us, but we need to take action to make room for God to grant us hope and peace by laying down that which causes us anxiety and pain. The act of laying down your burdens may just be the beginning for you. It may be totally appropriate for you to seek further assistance in finding complete peace. Or it may be that this simple act of faith and surrender is all you need. Last week, we focused on what it means to be a stone catcher instead of the ones who cast stones. You were invited to find a stone that is meaningful to you, along with a cross in your home or perhaps one that you made this week. Your stone represents your sorrow, your grief, your pain, despair, your burdens. If it helps, you may want to give your stone a name.
please take your stone or stones representing your burdens and lay them at the foot of the cross. Surrender your sorrow and your pain and place the stone in front of your cross as a sign of hope. Lay down your burdens at Jesus' feet and hear him say to you, I will never leave you or forsake you. Do not be afraid, for I am with you to the end of the ages. I am laying one of my stones with the word grace in front of this cross given to me by Umberto and Annie and Sonia before they moved to Mexico. It is from Mexico and represents God far near. Once you have laid down your burdens at the foot of the cross, prepare your hearts and your tables at home for communion with our Lord. Please join me. Because all are welcome, let us join together in the litany of welcome that we extend to all. And the table will be wide. And the welcome will be wide. And the arms will open wide to gather us in. And our hearts will be open wide to receive. And we will come as children who trust there is enough. And we will come unhindered and free and our aching will be met with bread, and our sorrow will be met with wine, and our brokenness will be met by Jesus' healing and wholeness. For I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body. It is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. Let us pray. Gracious God, we ask you to bless this bread and cup and all of us with the outpouring of your healing Holy Spirit. Through this meal, make us the body of Christ, taking all our burdens and brokenness and making us whole. Amen. Friends, take and eat, for this is the bread of hope and healing.
take and drink, for this is the cup of love and life. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your peace that passes all understanding. Thank you for providing us with hope for our bodies and souls. May that hope be our courage and resilience in a time of pandemic. For you are the Savior we need. Therefore, we join together to pray the prayer you taught us, saying, Our hope who art in heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Hello, church family. This is a Courage Angel, and I'm going to share with you some ideas that Pastor Amy and I have collected over the last few weeks during coronavirus to talk about courage today. Corona cannot stop me from smiling. Corona cannot stop me from connecting with my family via technology. Corona cannot stop me from teaching my students to the best of my ability, even if remotely. Corona cannot stop me from being the church and extending outreach ministry to feed those in need. Corona cannot stop me from practicing faith, hope, and love. 
coronavirus cannot stop me from acting with courage. Coronavirus cannot stop me from keeping in touch with my friends. Coronavirus cannot stop me from believing in tomorrow. Coronavirus cannot stop me from enjoying the coming fall season. Watching the news, coronavirus cannot stop the people in this world from coming together in works of outreach and caring. Coronavirus cannot stop me from imagining a global village where all God's people live together in beautiful peace. Coronavirus cannot stop my faith formation. Coronavirus cannot stop my creativity. Coronavirus cannot stop me from striving to be the best I can be. It cannot stop me from loving a sunny day and seeing beautiful flowers in bloom. Life continues to spring up anew. Coronavirus cannot stop the sun from providing its warmth and nourishment to the planet. Coronavirus cannot stop me from smiling when I see my children playing or laughing. Coronavirus cannot stop bad drivers from being out on the road because I still see them. Coronavirus cannot stop the grit of my coworkers to eradicate this disease and to care for those affected by it. Coronavirus cannot keep me from seeing the divine light in another's eyes. Coronavirus cannot separate me and you from the love of God in Christ Jesus. Jesus, courage, my church family.
tell me the one about the virus again, then I'll go to bed. But my boy, you're growing weary, sleepy thoughts about your head. Please, that one's my favourite. I promise just once more. <laughs> okay, snuggle down, my boy, though I know you know full well. The story starts before then, in a world I once would dwell. It was a world of waste and wonder, of poverty and plenty, back before we understood why hindsight's twenty twenty. You see, the people came up with companies to trade across all lands, but they swelled and got much bigger than we ever could have planned. We'd always had our wants, but now it got so quick. You could have anything you dreamed of in a day, and with a click. We noticed families had stopped talking. That's not to say they never spoke, but the meaning must have melted and the work-life balance broke. And the children's eyes grew squarer and every toddler had a phone. They filtered out the imperfections, but amidst the noise, they felt alone. And every day the skies grew thicker till you couldn't see the stars. So we flew in planes to find them while down below we filled our cars. We'd drive around all day in circles. We'd forgotten how to run. We swapped the grass for tarmac, shrunk the parks till there were none. We filled the sea with plastic because our waste was never capped until each day when you went fishing, you'd pull them out, already wrapped. And while we drank and smoked and gambled, our leaders taught us why. It's best to not upset the lobbies. More convenient die. But then in 2020, a new virus came our way. The governments reacted and told us all to hide away. But while we all were hidden, amidst the fear and all the while, the people dusted off their instincts. They remembered how to smile. They started clapping to say thank you and calling up their mums. And while the car keys gathered dust, they would look forward to their runs. And with the skies less full of voyagers, the earth began to breathe, and the beaches bore new wildlife that scuttled off into the seas. Some people started dancing, some were singing, some were baking. We'd grown so used to bad news, but some good news was in the making. And so when we found the cure, and were allowed to go outside, we all preferred the world we found to the one we'd left behind. Old habits became extinct, and they made way for the new. And every simple act of kindness was now given its due. But why did it take a virus to bring the people back together? Well, sometimes you've got to get sick, my boy, before you start feeling better. Now lie down and dream of tomorrow and all the things that we can do. And who knows, if you dream hard enough, maybe some of them will come true. We now call it the Great Realization and yes, since then, there have been many. But that's the story of how it started, and why hindsight's twenty twenty.